So today is a day when I do not offer a traditional sermon, but more of a homily addressed to our youth. It feels very odd that they are behind me, but everyone's welcome to listen in. And I invite you all, as we hear these words, to give thanks for these wonderful young people. As our youth were planning the service for today, they were crystal clear that they thought it was important for us to acknowledge and worship the reality of suffering and struggle that is a part of the world. As a people of faith, you wanted to guide us to ensure that attention was drawn to the injustices of some people's voices being silenced or some people not having a place to call home. You wanted us to name and notice that there are those who are afflicted by illnesses, some that are short-term and others that are chronic. There is still discrimination in our world and bullying, anxiety, war, and mental health afflictions that trouble people of all ages. This is the list you gave to me, and we all know that the list goes on. Even as we gather in the sanctuary once more together, we, and this is not only the we up here, but the we that is all over here, we are mindful that the last four years have indeed been an unprecedented season in history. There have been moments that, unlike any we have seen before, that have marked the years of your high school journey. Now, while those of us who are on this side of high school could certainly name the historical events that marked our high school years, we all know that the times in which you have learned and grown have indeed been exceptional. But it's interesting to note that a lot of the things that I will say about you and to you are the same things I would have said about you when you were in fourth grade or seventh grade. And here is the good news for you and for all of us. These folks are exceptional humans. I have known many of you since you were infants or in preschool, or some of you I only met when you got to sixth grade. But for as unique as each one of you are, you share a common quality I have had the privilege of witnessing grow in you. You are a community of youth who see a world in need, and you tell the truth about it. But you don't do this to complain, you don't shy away from naming need or injustice, but rather you roll up your sleeves and you help because you see the need and that's because it's who you are. You plant trees, you build houses, you tell jokes, you welcome strangers, you learn each other's pronouns, you teach little kids, you cook food for those who are hungry, you share God's love. You really do partner with God and one another to make this world a better place. One of you I gave a nickname, I think in fourth grade, as being the ambassador of friendship because wherever we went, you made a new friend with a stranger. You notice the helpers and the healers in our community and you draw attention to them too. And you see what you can do to partner with them too. Whether it's Hello Neighbor or the Pittsburgh Prison Book Project or the Greater Pittsburgh Food Bank. You witness teachers and healing professionals and scientists and friends sharing their gifts you celebrate their hard work, and then you lend a hand. Now, the struggles of our day might be particular to this moment of time, but the, the verses you have chosen from 1 Peter name a world in which a culture millennia ago knew suffering and persecution and hunger and illness. 
And the church of those times was not the religion of the state, but was a countercultural movement that was striving to live out the love of God in the midst of a world in which there was suffering and struggling and discord. And so Peter writes a letter to a church that is scattered, that is sent out into the world through exile and injustice, but a church that is one. Naming to those believers that God is a God who never ran from suffering, but joined humanity in such steadfast solidarity that God in Christ suffered too, even enduring death. But God was resur resurrected Christ from the dead, not only for Christ's sake, but to set all people free. One commentator sums it up like this. God stands with those who suffer, and that God ultimately triumphs over that suffering. And so exceptional humans, amazing teenagers that I'm peering at over the top of pews on my tiptoes because I'm pretty short, thank you. Thank you for all that you do and have done and will do to partner with God to alleviate suffering in the world, to enact justice, to encourage and build one another up, to extend friendship to a stranger, and to show us all how to live our faith. Thank you for reminding us that we do not need to be perfect, but that we need to be real, that we need to work together, and that we need to be kind. Thank you for your creativity, your vulnerability, your authenticity, your willingness to help out in a pinch, and thank you for being fun. As you scatter to go to college and continue to explore how God is calling you to engage the world, remember that wherever you go, you are always one with one another, with us, and with God. You are united by the power of the Holy Spirit who equips us to be the body of Christ no matter where our lives may take us. So know that wherever you go, God goes with you to guide you, to strengthen you, to challenge you, to nurture you, to protect you, to inspire you, you are not ever alone. And know that God will surely magnify your many gifts and continue the good work that God has begun already in you. You are and I expect will remain among the helpers and healers in this world, God's hands and heart. And so know that whatever you do and wherever you go, we love you. And God loves you even more than you can imagine. So keep being you, exceptional humans created by an exceptional God. Keep noticing and questioning and challenging and rolling up your sleeves and reaching out your hand and showing up for others. Keep telling the truth. Keep being yourselves. And may God bless you. And may God keep you. May God's face continually shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God's countenance be lifted up within you and give you peace that you might remain peacemakers in this world. For you, for your many gifts, I say thanks be to God.